Hallelujah. Come on, give them some praise tonight, church. Want to welcome everyone to Faith for Life Church. Want to welcome everyone that is joining us tonight. All those of you from South Africa listening tonight, God bless you. I know you should be asleep by now. Amen. Amen. Come on, greet your neighbor. Greet your neighbor. Say, neighbor, tonight's your night. It doesn't matter what it looks like. Tonight is your night. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen, 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 amen. Just get yourself ready once you give somebody a hug. If you haven't given somebody a hug or a handshake, you can't sit down. So please make sure you give somebody a little handshake. Let them know. Good to see you tonight, brother or sister. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. I'm Pastor Cindy. Great to have you all in the house. How many of you come with a heart of expectancy tonight? I tell you, I come with one all the time. All the time. I still haven't gotten used to having my Faithful Life Church ever since coming back from South Africa. But you know what? It's always a blessing. Amen. I love you all. I love you all. And I don't know how much more I'm going to tell you that I love you. Amen. So please make sure, as I say a couple of announcements, make sure you get your seed ready. Remember, we never come to the house of God without a seed. Our tithe, our offering, we are, we are faithful like he is faithful. Amen. Amen. God is good. Those that are joining us online as well, you can go to fflchurch.org and at the top it says giving and it'll gladly take you also to the house. Amen. To the church. Amen. We also accept credit card in the back. Please turn that lamp on, Marcel, for me. Please go to the back if you have a credit card you'd like to use or if you want to make a check, make it out to FFL. In Jesus' name or cash, you can always use cash. All I ask you, please, those of you that would like member numbers, a member number, all it is is just to show the accountant. If this is your church, shows the accountant that you want a member number. I've already had people requesting that on their envelopes and the, and the um, accountant has actually sent that over to me and I've, I've distributed those numbers out. So if you would like a member number, make sure you put that on the envelope. He sees that. Say, I would like a member number and when he gives it to me, I'll make sure to give it over to you. All that is, is that is a member number just for you. So if your children get your sow seed in the back, all they got to do is put on the envelope. If you look at the envelope, it has member number. Just put the number there. You don't even have to put your name. You don't have to do anything, but you got to remember your number. Amen. Because if you don't remember your number, you may put in your seed and somebody else's number. And we don't want to do that. Amen. And I'm not going to tell you my member number so you don't put it all on mine. <laughs> just kidding. At the end of the year, we give you a contribution statement and be like, whoa. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I love you. God bless you. Amen. Make sure you get the church app. Amen. Can we have what it looks like on the app store? That's what it looks like. Make sure you get the church app and it's actually free to you. Please make sure you do that. You get your upcoming events, your sermons, your worship. Amen. You can get Faith for Life worship on there and also you can sow your seed online thank you everyone who's doing that as well and then um, just go ahead and do all that good stuff remember only clear water in the sanctuary no gum please we just do that we ask you please i don't like to see it on the camera i don't like to see you blowing your bubbles on the camera it just does not look right go ahead pastor pray for me it just doesn't look right it just doesn't look right so please let's not do that i just had to be a little bit specific you know blowing the bubbles and everything we just don't do that um also we're not having any basic any young adults this month but starting october we're gonna kick it off so make sure that you come our freedom friday starts in october i believe it's the fourth we start that off then we've got soul sisters on the seventh all my mighty mighty sisters be sure to come because i will be present so make sure you all come. All of that starts up in October as well. We just had, since we were away for a good little while, we just wanted to give everybody the opportunity just to also bask and be able to rewind and go back in to listen to other things as well. Amen. And spend very much time with your family. Also, baptismal for the church is the 28th of September. I believe it's next week. Am I right? Make sure those of you that are going to get baptized, this is going to happen after service. You bring yourself your towel. And please bring yourself dark clothes. So please, let's not forget that as well. Even if you think you may, please just come. Because even if you think you may, that's the Lord telling you you're going to get in the water. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And we also remember we have Faith for Life Espanol service at 2 p.m. So that's on Sundays. Be sure to come. As well as VLCC on Sunday mornings at 10 so we've got a lot, a lot, a lot going on. So please make sure you come. VLCC's Victorious Living Christian Center in Leak City. Please make sure you come for that as well if you would like to go on a Sunday morning. 
And then give it up for our men's retreat is around the corner, October 31st to November 2nd. We are excited. Those of you that have completely paid that already, thank you for that. Those of you that have just paid half a payment, that's great. But I'm telling you, I know many of you are budgeting that as well. Thank you for doing that. But please, every time you come into the church, pay a little something. Get a hold of Yancy Salinas. She's in the back doing the credit card machine. Please get it out of your hands and get it to her. Um, even if you think you're coming, please, next week, or you probably think you're going to come, and just please take care of it. Get with her. We would love to have you. It's going to be at the House Retreat Center. We got a, we're going to get a bus for you, gentlemen. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be fun. Your meals are included, and you're going to do a lot of fun. And you're going to get a, Apostle Sloan. You got Evangelist Rick Ross. It's just going to be a lot of fun. And some of us just may show up. I'm just kidding. No, ladies, you are not. You're prohibited from going to the men's retreat. Amen. And then also, let me see what we have. Every Wednesday, we also have the ages of 8 to 12. We have fire culture going on tonight. So make sure your child that is the age 8 to 12, you go, they go ahead and have class as well today. If you continue to sew on missions, please write down on the envelope to missions. So therefore, that goes, gets into the right account. Amen. Let's go ahead and get ourselves standing up. God bless you again. Those of you that are joining us, I'm excited. Miss you. Love you because you're not here. Amen. Come on. Give it up for the man of God who is ready. Who is ready and ready and ready. I'm willing to let you borrow him because I had him for 17 days. 17 days. God bless you, God bless you God. man of God. She survived 17 days with me. No, Come he on. survived oh, yeah, about 17 days. Yeah. I gave up 17 yeah, days that's for you, right, man that's of God. Right, that's, that's right. It, but what no more for a while. <laughs> Amen. You better have loved it because that's it. For, woo! Until hey, next year. Until next no. <laughs> year. Yeah, we're in, we're in Next September, Next year, buddy. the end of the year. Huh? Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Come on, put your hands together for the Lord. Wow. While we're discussing our uh, travel journeys, huh? tell your neighbor, God is good. God is good. Hey, he's good to you. He's good to me. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Lift your hands to heaven. Father, we just come before you tonight. Oh God, we give you glory and honor and praise. We worship you today. We thank you, oh God. Uh, there is none like you. Oh no, no, there is none like you, Lord. You're amazing. You're wonderful. You're almighty. You're so good to us. You love us so much, oh God. And the plans that you have for us, wow, wow, thank you that you made a plan for us before we were ever born, oh God. And we open our heart tonight to hear the pieces and the parts that you want to give to us today about the plan that you have for our life. We open our heart to hear truth, to see and have revelation, to know and understand that our God is so wow and so amazing and his plans are for sure. And we're not ashamed of your gospel we're not ashamed of Jesus we're not ashamed of the Holy Ghost we're not ashamed of what you said we're not ashamed of what you've done and we're not ashamed for what you're about to do God we give you all the glory all the honor and all the praise we ask you just have your way tonight minister life to us Holy Spirit come come Holy Ghost we will not have a meeting without you Holy Ghost come Holy Ghost Come in this place. Feel your people. We ask you in Jesus' mighty name. Mm, touch your neighbor, say glory, huh? Hey, touch your neighbor, take glory, huh? I feel the glory of God in this place. <laughs> Woo! Y'all should just take some of that, you know? I mean, you should just take some of that. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, just give him a hand clap of praise. <laughs> I want you to go to Exodus chapter 3. Our God is a mighty God. <laughs> he has ways. Say, so neighbor, God has ways. If you discover God's ways, you can put away your ways. <laughs> God has ways of doing things, huh? You know, the Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God. Huh? We know this scripture, right? Seek first the kingdom of heaven, right? Seek first the kingdom and all its righteousness. Do you know what righteousness is? 
God's ways of doing things. Amen. Can you imagine God has ways of doing things? So when you're seeking God, you're seeking the kingdom of God, you're actually seeking his way. Yes. You're looking, to, what is the way of God for my life? What does God have for me? Not what I have, not what, what people said is for me. What does God say is for me? These are ways. God has ways. He's not put away his ways. He's hid them in the word. He said, it's been given unto you to know the mysteries of my ways. Oh, God. Somebody say, he's got ways. Uh, people say God is mysterious. No, 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 no. His ways are mysterious, but he's revealed his mysteries. So what's mysterious? We don't read. That's what's mysterious. We refuse to hear. That's what's mysterious. We think God is one way, and that's why he's a mystery. But he says, to you, it has been given to know my ways. He said, my ways are above your ways. My thoughts are, but with the Holy Ghost. I, I, the mind of Christ now comes to know his way. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. What is God's way? Huh? Seed time harvest is one of God's ways. Whether we agree with it or not, whether we like it or not, it's the way of God. I'll prove it to you once again. I'll, I'll prove it every, every time I, I come up here to, to receive an offering for the kingdom of God. I'm going to prove it to you Amen. that God has ways. Amen. And all you got to do is jump in his ways. Amen. And all of a sudden it starts working for you, huh? Amen. Exodus chapter 3 verse 7. Tell you never, you ready for this one? Because your mind going to be like, poof. It's going to blow your mind, huh? Tell you, it's about time my mind get blown. Because I need the mind of Christ. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt. Somebody say, in Egypt. Where were his people? Where was he talking to this man? Who is this man he's talking to? Do you know this man? Oh, yeah, don't be nervous. Who's, who, who's speaking? First of all, real quick, let's do a Bible lesson. Who's speaking? The Lord. The Lord. Oh, that's good. Let's go faster. Who's speaking? Who he? Ichabo. Ichabo. Who's he speaking to? Who's he speaking about? Hey, come on, Bible students. My God. God is speaking. He's speaking to a man named Moses, and he's talking about his people. Where are his people? But where is Moses? Moses is not in Egypt. Somebody say, poof. <laughs> Let's blow your mind. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost now. <laughs> I have heard their cry because of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. Who, who sorrows? The people in Egypt. Not Moses. Why? Because Moses wasn't in Egypt. Moses was not, tell your neighbor, Moses wasn't in Egypt. Next question. How come God waited for Moses to get out of Egypt before he ever spoke to him? I mean, wasn't Moses born and raised in Egypt? Wasn't he right next to Pharaoh? Couldn't God have spoke to the man? Then why did God wait? Check this out. Are you ready? Are you sure? I'm trying to help you know the ways of God. So Moses gets excited because he gets a revelation. When he gets a revelation, he realizes, wait a minute, I'm a deliverer. He said, I'm a deliverer. He saw uh, an Egyptian whipping his brother. The Bible says he killed him, buried him. He said he killed him and buried him. The next day, he sees his brothers fighting. And he's like, hey, 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 what, what's, what's going on, guys? Come on, aren't we brothers? Shouldn't we get along? And they said, you're going to kill us like you killed the Egyptian. Now watch this. Hold on a second. First, the first Egyptian killed by Hebrew is buried. 
Amen. Somebody say seed. Seed. The man that buried him. Y'all, y'all, y'all better be, y'all better, y'all better hang on. See, you thought you figured out God. I'm just trying to show you. The man that buried the first Egyptian killed by Hebrew. A seed was buried by a seed. No, 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 you see, you're stuck still. Let me help you. The deliverer killed an Egyptian, buried him in the sand. A seed. Because I'm coming back for the rest of you. But it was a seed that buried a seed. Say, how is Moses a seed? Y'all ready for this? Because he was the first one out the gate. The first one out the gate. So why didn't God speak to Moses when he was still in the gate? Because God don't do nothing until you so. All the rest of your money locked up in Egypt. And you waiting on God. God said, put a seed. And I'll use that seed to call all the other Egyptians to be buried, to let go of your Hebrew money. Oh, I don't know. No, 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 no. I, I don't know if we understood that. Huh? God spoke to Moses after he was already out. Never do you see him talk until the seed is already out of Egypt. And the seed produces a harvest. Uh, it's, it's too much, too heavy. It's too heavy. It's too heavy. It's too heavy. I, I'll let you sow on that. We might go somewhere else. Go ahead. Can we sing? Tired of doing all the same thing. Come on and top your voice and sing. Enlarge my territory. Whoa, whoa. Enlarge my territory. Come on, just sing it out loud. Enlarge my territory. Yeah. Enlarge my territory. There's gotta be more. There's gotta be more. There's gotta be more. Hey, you. I know there is more. I know there is more, I know there is more And you set me to another level Another level, another level Another level, set me to another level Another level, another level Another level Enlarge my territory. Come on, I think you can see a little better. Enlarge my territory. Enlarge my territory. Enlarge my territory. There's gotta be more. There's gotta be more. There's gotta be more. And you, I know there is more. I know there is more. I know there is more. And you set me to another level. Another level. Another level, another level, set me to another level, another level, another level. Can you lift up your hands a little bit and just sing? Take me to another level, another level, another level, 
Another level, send me to another level. Another level, another level, another level, send me to another level. Another level, another level, another level, send me to another level. Another level, another level, another level, send me to another level. Another level, another level, another level, send me to another level. Another level. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together for the Lord. Come on, real quick. Real, real hard, real hard. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> so now your seed got to go back to Egypt and get all the others. <laughs> the Bible says what a man soweth, that's what, he, that's what he'll reap. God knew he had to get Moses out because he could never reap anybody else unless Moses came out first. Moses' seed to all the other Hebrews breaking out. And he buried all the other Egyptians just like he buried the first one. I'm telling you, our God is amazing. Tell your neighbor, we got to follow his ways, not our ways. Hey, hold on. While they were still working in Egypt, Moses had been delivered. And then God sent the deliverer to go get them out of working. Okay, all right, all right. From slavery to ownership, man of God. From a nine to five to a multimillionaire. I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know if we, if we believe that we should be. Huh? Somebody say, I receive. Somebody say, I hear it, Lord. And I'm going to keep it in my heart. Just as Mary did, I'll do. I'll keep it in my heart. Uh, keep that seed of the word and let the Holy Ghost work it out in me. In Jesus' name. Come on, shout, I'll never be broke. Another day in my life. I'm blessed and highly favored because I follow the principle of the Lord. Hey, and if Moses came out and he's the seed and the seed brought all three million plus out what 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 why not you oh somebody say i take it now huh? i take it now somebody say it's mine because it's in the word let me finish this so i have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the egyptians and to bring them up. Somebody say, I'm coming out and I'm going up. Even now, I'm out and I'm up. From that land to a good land, a large land. Somebody say, I receive my land. To a land flowing. Uh, uh, not dripping, not dripping, not asleep. A land that got a flow. That means you ain't got to pray for a flow. I mean, what, what you got to pray for if it's already moving? What you got to cry for if you already got it? It's flowing with milk and honey and all that money. I mean, <laughs> uh, Oh, he, 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 here's what you got to deal with. To the place of the Canaanites, the Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, and all the Jebusites. In other words, all these ites are messing up your flow. All these ites are keeping you out. That's why you got to kick out the ites, huh? That's why you got to release the ites. I can't. I can't. It's impossible. That's not happening. You know, we're supposed to live like this. That's an ite. Get it. 
You got to kick the ites out. Huh? It'll never work for me. Get that ite out. Just get out. Get, get all the parasites out. You know what I mean? They're all parasites, you know. They just want to leech on you. I don't think we're ready for this Wednesday night. Y'all, y'all can go. Y'all can go. Y'all can go. The, the offering's already blessed because the land's flowing. You know, if, if the land is flowing, I mean, it's blessed already. Huh? We ain't got to cry about it. We, we ain't got to pray for it. God said, go into it. What you got to pray about if God said go? He said this is what he came for. He came to deliver them. Bring them out of a place of slavery into a place that flows. My God, what are we waiting on? Right. The ites are keeping you out, though. Yeah. Tell you never, not me no more. Not me no more. Me no more. That, but it's, there's a whole bunch of ites. We got one, two, three, four, five, six different. Mm, hold on. One, two, three, four, five, six different. That's the number of man. Oh, six different. Different ites working against you. To stop you from getting in what belongs to you. Right. Ain't never but a seed. A seed. Hey, has power to break me out. Huh? Yeah. Hey, don't curse your seed. Tell you, neighbor, bless your seed. Bless don't seed. curse your seed. Amen. Seed. Are you receiving something now? Yeah. Are you okay? We, we're gonna we're gonna pause that. Okay. And let's let's go to Psalms one nineteen. Y'all can be seated. Y'all can be seated. Amen. Wonderful. Y'all are amazing. God is so good. Hallelujah. Psalms 119. I, I pray you brought your ears. That, the, the inner ear. That ear that hears. Somebody say, I'm going to hear on another level right now. See, because, 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 because if you don't start hearing on another level, you'll never get there. See, you can hear from a place you ain't yet. Oh, yeah. Let me, let me talk to somebody who wants something. I, I know it's Wednesday night, but you got to come like you want something. You know? Wednesday night, Thursday, it doesn't matter, whatever night, the Holy Ghost moving, you got to act like you want something, you know? I mean, you, if you can hear, though you ain't, you ain't arrived yet. But if you ain't listening to where you ain't arrived, you'll never arrive. You'll never get there. Are you with me? Somebody say, I'm understanding. I'm understanding right now. Where, where's Psalms 1, 119? Where are we at? 119? 130. Huh? See, you got to hear on another level. See, what we, what we like to do sometimes is because it makes us comfortable to hear where we're at. But where you at, you don't need to hear. You already know where you're at. You already know you're struggling somewhere. Ain't nobody need to tell you you're struggling. They need to tell them, come up thither. Come up. Y'all don't even know what this means. Y'all read your Bible, Lord Jesus. It means come up higher. Come up higher. But how are you going to come up higher if you don't hear the voice say come up higher? That means you got to you gotta open your ear to a higher place. Uh, there is a higher place. There's a higher place. Do you know that every level there's another one? So then why we sit on one level for 40 years? Let me, help, let me move this thing. I talk to people. Why, why we sit on a level for 40 years? We're like, I've been in church for 40 years. What level you at now? Well, the same level when I got born again? <laughs> like there's something wrong. Something wrong. That ain't right. I'm talking about personally. Are you with me? There's another level. That means when you got born again, that was level one. <laughs> Entry level. That means we need to be hungry for another level. To know that God is never ending. Uh, there, you can never tap God. Huh? You can always look. The world is ending. You know what I'm saying? I mean, climate change, Lord Jesus, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Don't get me. Don't get me started. I see Christians don't even believe their Bible. Till the earth remains cold and hot. Hold on a second. Who's going? Who's going to make it hotter? Who's going to make it colder? Wait a minute. The earth is in cycles. Seed time, harvest time. You don't believe your Bible. That's why you go. You start protesting. I'm talking to them, not y'all. You start pro- climate change. I'm not talking about being res- not responsible. Be responsible. Be responsible. Be responsible. I ain't talking about. Pick up your trash. Put your trash in the trash can. 
My God, put it where, you know, put it where it belongs. I'm not talking about being irresponsible. I'm talking about, oh my God, the world is going to end in 2023. No, we be millionaires, don't worry. <laughs> but the Bible's the Bible. It's the word of God. It'll never change. Seed time, harvest time, sun shall shine and, and, the, and the moon and then it's going to be cold and it's going to be hot. It's hot in Houston, man. I came back from South Africa. I was freezing, man. Came back to Houston. I'm like, oh my God, I'm sweating. What's, what's, this is wrong. I'm in Africa. I'm cold. I'm in Houston. I'm, I'm crying because it's hot. God, send me back to Africa. I want to be cold. I just <laughs> Are you with me? I'm not talking about being irresponsible. I'm talking about don't be buying into foolishness that the world is selling right now to the church folk. That church folk don't believe their Bible. I'll tell your neighbor, I do, I do. I'm going to stick to it. I don't care what people say. The entrance, it's 130, the entrance of your words. Whose words? Whose words? Oh, look, look, big, big Y, big Y. That's Yahweh. El Shaddai. Huh? Big God. His words gives light. The entrance, the entering in of his words gives you light. Nothing else gives you light. But when his words enter you, I'm not talking about bounce off your forehead. they are like, oh, I heard that was a good sermon, but it just bounced off your forehead. There's no light that just took place. It was just like a chill bump, like, woo. But, you know, chill bump getting down your spine, like, oh, I felt something. And you felt something, but did the light go on? Because you can feel something and the light be off and you still bump into the wall. Bam. Bam. Like, all right, all right. I, 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 wanna, I came to help you. And we, I, I, I really came to turn it around for you. Huh? So the entrance of your words gives light. When, it, when you let his words penetrate you. Are you with me? We talked about on, on Spanish service. Dilo, Spanish service was off the charts. We talked about your culture. Uh, your culture will cause your faith to be nothing. Because you believe your culture more than you believe in. Just by default. Just by default. Because how you were raised, your culture be stronger than your faith. Ah, you believe these things because they've been ingrained in you. And then the word of God comes and bounces off your forehead. Well, I don't believe that because, you know, that's not how I was raised. Well, that's the problem. In the entrance, that means the word has to pierce you. That's why the Bible says the word is a sword. What, what? The word is light and it is a sword. But if you don't let the sword cut you, the word, the light will never enter you. You gotta let the word just cut all up in your culture, all up in your ideology, all up in your thought process. Like how you thought God was gonna do something, God ain't, ain't never done it for you. God ain't never done it, and you think God's gonna do it that way, but his word is opposite. I have this all this saying. If you remember me, you remember the saying. God is not a magician. Most folk think, Christian folk, that God is a magician. I got saved, now poof. Now your whole life is better. I got baptized, poof. My whole life is better. Uh, let's, let's take a poll. You know, everybody be like, mm -hmm. You know what's true? Uh, salvation or receiving Christ and baptism is an assurance of your eternal life, but not this one. <laughs> this one. You be, you, you, oh, I could dunk you 15 times. Hey! Hold you under for a while. But then you don't do nothing with what you received that takes you into eternity. You don't do nothing with it now. Ain't gonna happen. Nothing gonna happen. Nothing. You're still gonna fight with your wife. Like God just changed you because, oh, Jesus, I love you now. 
No, because it's the entrance of his words. That means we don't read the Bible enough. No, we do everything else more than we read the Bible, more than we listen to the word of God. We'll listen to everything else, but we refuse to listen to the word. But yet the word is light. I said it before, you can't come around me unless you're listening to something. You don't want to hang out with me because you be listening to something. <laughs> we be doing something at a house. A preacher preaching. Paya, shaka, renga, usa, randa, ita. Oh, the word playing. Shh. Some of y'all know. Some of y'all come to the house. They're like, oh, 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 God, what's going on? The word of the Lord is coming forth. Because the entrance of his word, it gives light. It gives light. It gives light. But if it doesn't enter, it just, it's like a mirror, you know. You know what's good about a mirror? It reflects light. That's good if you're trying to look in it. But if you're trying to get light to go through it, it'll never happen. Because it's designed to push it off. Let me go over here. A mirror was built to push light out. Not to absorb it. Mm, you were designed to take it in, not push it off. You were designed to let it get inside of you. You were designed to hunger after the word, thirst after the word. Let it get in you. Let it transform you from the inside out. Let it get in you and start eating you up. So the entrance of your word gives light. Ah, it gives understanding. People say, I don't understand. I'm like, stop trying to understand. Just get it in you. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I don't understand. It's too bad. It's going to take you a lifetime to understand. Stop trying to understand and let it produce understanding. Yeah. Understanding is it's not book smart. It's like the word is in me and all of a sudden, poof. Right. Now, every time you see Moses, you're going to see him burying a seed. And it's like understanding now. Wow. Every time he went, one Egyptian killed him, he buried him. A seed, a seed. Now all of a sudden you're like, I need to do the same. Yes, Amen. Amen. Hey! Because the word produces light. It illuminates and it gives understanding to the simple. Yes. It brings you understanding. It starts to produce understanding. The reason we don't understand is because we don't let it enter us. Are you with me? We're too busy trying to figure it out. Stop trying to figure it out. You're being a mirror. When you're trying to figure out the word, especially while we're preaching, just run with me. Let it get in you. We're trying to figure it out. I already left. You're still at the bus stop. You're figuring out point A. Like, I don't even have point A. I just got scripture A. And you still trying to figure out scripture A, and we're on. Are you with me? Just let it oh, I, be like. Just let it get. Oh, it does it by itself. It, watch this. Okay. It was shut by by me. On the body. The entrance of your words do what? Who gives the light? You figuring it out? Letting it enter, it produces light. It's very simple. The entrance of Yahweh's, God's words, gives light. Not you trying to figure out what he's saying. Figure out what's he preaching? Hey, the bus left, and there will be no light because you ain't caught up to here. Catch up. Oh, I, I'm, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna kill it. 
Sometimes I wonder, how did I know that? I, I'm, I'm, I'm being real. Yeah. I'm like, how did, how, no, that wasn't me. I don't know how I knew that. But now that it came out, I know it. And you can never take it from me. You, you understand me? It's like, how did I know that? I didn't know. I mean, there's many things. I'm like, how did I, oh Lord Jesus, my God, you're so good. Why? Because I've allowed his word to get in me. And then it just produces light. There's things I know that I don't know. But I do know. And now that I do know, I know and you can't take it. Like I just know that I know that I know, but I never knew. But when his word came, it brought a knowing. It gives understanding to the simple. The word itself gives, if you have an open heart. If you, have an, if you don't have an open heart, it'll never do this. Why? Because it's the entrance of it. That's why it's a sword. That's why you got to get in and cut all the way, spirit, soul, and body. So in other words, if you're not willing to lose yourself, it'll never enter you. No, if you're not willing to let it go, it, God, God can never force nobody to do nothing. I, I don't care. God can't force nobody to do nothing. He, he ain't that. The devil will put a gun to your head. God will be like, here I am. You need me. And here I am. Wait. <laughs> They always say, what you want? The devil will put a gun to your head and force you. But God will stand there and say, hey, uh, you need me. Here I am. What you going to do? Run to me, huh? <laughs> yeah, the Bible says, turn from your wicked ways. Repent. You know, turn from your and, and turn. <laughs> and then I'll heal your land. In other words, come back to me. <laughs> when you come back to me, I'll heal what the devil caused you to destroy. So the entrance of his word gives light. But you got to let the word into you. When you, we, us, refuse the word, we're refusing light. We're refusing understanding. We're refusing transformation. Because transformation only comes by light. A plant will never grow without infusing light. You can have everything else, but no light, it'll just, mm. and a lot of Christians are like that because the light is the word, and they just withered away. Their spirit, man, is sick because they refuse to take the word. They put everything else in front of the word. Come on, let's be real. Ah, we, we, we'd rather do everything else than hear the word or read the word or listen to the word. Mm. We were, we were, we were. <laughs> yeah, let's be real, man. And then we wonder, what's God? God's in his word. When you put his word, guess what? You'll get God. But I've been saved already. It, <laughs> yeah, and I'm glad you saved. We need to get all, everybody saved. Uh, but you can, you can be saved on earth, on your way to heaven. But living like hell. Yeah. Suffering. Going through stuff you should never go through. Complaining and crying and whining. And you'll never enter that place. Hmm? The land flowing with milk and honey. Though it is available. Tell your neighbor, it's available. It is open. But it only comes with the word. It only comes with the word. You can never get in there without the word. This is why... Moses is an example of Jesus who himself is a seed. Amen. Moses is a seed and is an example of Jesus as a deliverer. And Jesus himself is a seed. And he said the seed is the word. <laughs> and the word produces light. And he said I am the light. <laughs> So we accept Jesus, but will we accept his word? <laughs> we'll be like, I love Jesus and I receive Jesus because I don't want to go to hell. I don't blame nobody. I don't want to go to hell. I don't want nobody to go to hell. And we're like, I don't want to go to hell either. So we make Jesus. But then when Jesus starts talking, who said that? <laughs> what scripture is that? I don't believe that. <laughs> Where'd you find that in the Bible? That ain't true. 
We're like, uh, wait, what you mean a woman got to submit to a man? What's it, what's it mean the man needs to die like Christ? Oh, what's, what's that? What? What you talking about? Where's that in the Bible? It's not, it's, it's not in my American version, American standard version. No, it's in the original version. Glory to God. Am I helping somebody? Y'all got a little nervous when I said that. Y'all like... All the, all the ladies tensed, and then the husbands went, hey, he's talking to me too, uh-huh. So if we don't let the word enter us, light does not enter, and we struggle as believers. There's no need to struggle as a believer, amen? Come on, preaching to myself, I'm preaching to you, I'm preaching to everybody, and y'all watching. Uh, 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 the word of the Lord is preaching to you, huh? The entrance, what does the entrance mean? That means entrance. Everybody, y'all used the entrance to get in here, didn't you? That, that means there's a door. Right. Yeah. Psalm says, open up ye gates right. and let the king of glory come in. Yeah. That means open up your heart, open up your life, let the king of glory come in. Yeah. But now that you've been saved yeah. in the name of Jesus, yeah. let the same savior speak yeah. and don't turn him off. And this is what we do as Christian folk. We're like, well, I'm good. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go to heaven. But we don't let the Savior speak. And so we end up in all kinds of troubles. Because his word wants to give us light to see. But the Bible says the word is a lamp unto our feet, a light unto our path. It is the directions in which we are supposed to go. The things that we are, which, which way do I go? How do I handle this? You can't handle it without the word. The word of God is your, how do I say that, Lord? I see it, but how do I say it? Huh? As an ambassador, you have a law book in which you're supposed to abide. You're an ambassador. It is a legal book in which you are supposed to abide by while you're living in another land. So then how do you handle all this other people or other situations as an ambassador it's in the word how am I supposed to act how am I supposed to talk how am I supposed to be it's in the word and without that we get all tripped up and don't know why we suffer God didn't send you to suffer God sent he said I know the plans I think my daughter hit that I know the plans that I have for you huh? to prosper you huh? good that you're blessed that you live a good life but you can't live a good life without the entrance of his word. That means you got to be open. That means open up your gates. Don't just accept Christ and be like, I'm, I'm finished. Woohoo! And now I just go to church and listen to the man give me a lecture. <sighs> just a lecture. No, that was your dad, man. <laughs> That's why sometimes you don't want to listen to me because you think. I'm like that one. Uh, yeah, yeah. But actually, I'm a man of God assigned to deliver you. Are you with me? And if you can see that, you can catch into it, and everybody can come out of Egypt and find the land that flows. <laughs> let me, let me, oh Lord, I, I don't know where we're going. We're on the way. I know where we're going, but I, I don't know where we're going. <laughs> so the entrance of your words, not, not your neighbor, not your cousin. If your cousin's speaking other than his words, guess what? That ain't light. That's confusion. That's darkness. That's deception. Oh, they love me, not more than God. Nobody, nobody will love you more than God will love you. And God ain't going to mince his words. He's going to say what he means to say, and he's going to keep what he said to you solid. Amen. And he ain't going to change it. Are you with me? So the entrance of his word gives light, and it gives understanding to the simple. So what are we trying to understand? People say, I don't understand his word. It's because you got it here, and you ain't let it come in. Yeah. 
when he said in the scripture, my ways are above your ways. My thoughts are above your thoughts. Isn't that what he said? That's what he said. Which means if you're taking his word and trying to figure it out with the thoughts, and yet his thoughts are way above your thoughts, you'll never understand it. Look, I sat with some smart people in, in, in Africa, some smart people, and they were like, and this and that, and, this, and the, the government, and this government, and this, society, and this and this bank system, and that. And I was like, glory to God. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> I shook my head like glory. <laughs> okay, all right, amen. That's good. I like that. Praise the Lord. I sh just shook my head because I, at the end of it all, I was like, wow. What did all that mean? Because <laughs> it was beyond my thoughts. Are you with me? This is what we do to God. We try to figure out everything he's saying instead of letting it into. Just let it in. Be like, Lord, I, I, that's the word. I received that. <laughs> Your word is giving me light right now. I'm just letting it in. It's just into, letting it in. Just letting it come inside of you. Yeah, how do you do that? Stop blocking it. Stop blocking it. Like, what does he mean by that? Who cares? Just let it get in you. If it gives understanding, did you understand it or did it give you? I mean, it's right there. Did you understand it or did it give you understand? Which means you didn't understand it until it gave you understanding. <laughs> I'm trying to help somebody because we go to church and we try to figure it all out. Figure it out. Figure it out. Figure. It out. Stop trying to figure it out. Just trust God and eat it. Just receive it. <laughs> So the entrance of his words, God's words, what does it do? It gives light, which means you don't give it light. It gives you light when it enters you. You've got to understand this. You're you going to understand this. Just by association with people that walk on another level. Just by associating with them. All of a sudden, you don't realize it, you start coming up. I've yeah. been 17 days with profit. 17 days. Just by association, I see what I've never seen before. Just by association. Which is, which is an issue because we, we try to associate with people of like mind instead of a higher. Watch this. Yeah, don't, don't throw nothing, but just, just hold it. You poor and you want to be rich. Let me talk over. You poor and, and you struggling and you want to be rich. But all your friends are poor. So everyone you talk to, struggling. Everyone you eat dinner with, struggling. And you praying, God, bring me out. God said, who you associate with? Why? Because just by association, the way they are, Starts working on you. Look, first thing, first thing I experienced, I, I don't know if I said it yet, first thing I experienced when I was in South Africa is they put me in the front seat. Okay? First thing I did was hit the brakes. I said, wait a minute, this ain't right. There's no brake on the left side. <laughs> and I, I, went to, I went to get the mirror and move the mirror because they, the, they drive on the left and the driver sitting on the right. So when I was a passenger, they sat me on the left. Well, I'm used to. That's the left. And just simply by. Just simply by repetition and being always driving on the left. Just sitting in the seat, I was the driver. And then I said, whoa, what am I doing? 
And it started to hurt. It hurt. I was like, ah, I can't sit up here. Because I'm like, ah. Like, ah. Ah, where are these cars coming from, man? My wife, she, she, she reading there like, ah. Oh, okay, we're not in the wrong lane. Woo. I mean, 17 days. They're like, we turning, we turning, and we turning from the wrong lane. I'm like, ah. Okay, I'm not sitting. The, it hurt. Oh God. Why every time that man preach, it hurts? Because what you're so used to, you grabbing for some kind of insurance or assurance or some kind of good feeling to make me feel good, but there ain't nothing there. Because I'm putting you on the other side, are you? Yeah. <laughs> Even though I knew I wasn't driving, I tr- I, you should have seen me. I was like, oh, Lord. I said, even the mirror looks crazy. It's going that way. I said, oh, yeah. I said, I had to pray. I told my wife, I said, man, that's the craziest thing. Because you're so used to something else. So what we do is we come around what we're used to because it makes us comfortable. And then we're praying for God to break us out. God ain't going to break you. How? How? You keep going back. You go back. You go back to what's comfortable. And God won't break you out. You ask God, God break me out. But then you... Just go back to what's comfortable. Yes. That's real. Oh, it's a, it's, a, it's a word. <laughs> yeah. You go find the same kind of friends. Yeah, you do. You, 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 you look for the same kind because they make you. Uh. <laughs> you got a problem with your wife? You go find somebody that got a problem with theirs and you. But that's not the that's not the Bible. You oh, might help somebody yet. Yeah. See, you gotta hear a voice from a higher place to get there. Yeah. We, 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 we associate with people that are just like us and we're crying to get out. Moses was a seed, he got out. There was no way he could have delivered them. That's why God did never speak to him. Until he was first sown out of Egypt. God spoke to the seed and said, go get the rest of them. Wow. Uh, I think somebody just missed their moment. I think somebody just missed their harvest moment right there. Huh? God couldn't speak to Moses until he became a seed outside of Egypt. I think, I, think, I, think, I think maybe two people, people understand. Yeah, you got money in your pocket and God want to speak, but he can't say nothing until it becomes seed. But I don't understand. Uh, let it enter. You'll get it. You'll be like, ah, poof. it just comes. That's the word. You got to figure it out. You got to let it in. It does the work. <laughs> Let's go here. Let's go. Did you save yourself? No. Did you let him in? Yes. Uh, um, um, Lord, come what? Yes. Where? Uh, mm, my who? My heart. my heart. Did you save yourself? No. Did you figure it out? No. You trusted. That's the word. And you let him in. Yes. And when you let him in, you're assured. I'm, I'm gone, baby. <laughs> I'm making heaven because I let him in. But then the word, we got to go. Let me, let me process it. And your processing is called reasoning. And you're kicking out the things that need to enter instead of letting it in. Oh, I wish I helped somebody this Wednesday night. Yeah, you're trying to figure it out in your mind? Like, oh, let me process it like if it's some kind of mathematics problem. No, it ain't. 
Did you figure Jesus out when he came in and how you got saved? No, you just said, oh, man, I felt that, Lord Jesus. Come on. Yeah. See, when the word enters you, you feel it. When it, when it hits you, pow, you're like, woo, he talking to me. Glory to God. I, 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 I. Even though it pierced me, I took it. Yay. But when you ain't let it, you're like, mm, mm. You're blocking it. Mm, 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 mm. I don't know about all that kind of preaching, you know. I want a preacher I can understand. No, you want your friend then. You want your neighbor. You want the person just like you. I want a preacher I can understand. I want him to, you know, elementary me. Oh, you want who's around you, which means you can never come out. Another reason God didn't take him out when Moses was with them right there. Had to get him out. And then they couldn't understand it when he came back. What you? Well, what? Who? You? Moses? What? I don't understand this guy. Prove it to me. <laughs> and then he started doing signs, wonders, and miracles. They were like, I don't understand. I, I don't care. I, I, I just believe. I'm done. Oh, you hear somebody? Yeah. You see, we got religious. Like, we've been taught to be religious, yeah. to come to church to understand the preacher. Yeah. Instead of letting that word that is on another level just yeah. poof, get in us. Yeah. And just by association with that word, it starts taking you higher. Yeah. <laughs> Woo, somebody say Jesus. I think I'm on the first scripture. I, I got like five more. <laughs> We're trying to get through this one, you know. <laughs> I feel like somebody needs this one here. <laughs> so just letting the word get in you. Just letting it get in you. Because all of us have said, I don't understand the Bible. <laughs> you lift every fingers and toes, man. That's why we just put it down. We just put it aside. And we're like, <laughs> if it was a book of understanding, my God, can you imagine? You wouldn't need God, would you? Would you need God if you understood? If you had no need to decipher it. Or allow revelation to come in. You wouldn't need God, would you? Mm -hmm. That's why he puts it in a mysterious Amen. formula. Yeah. Amen. And then he says to you, it has been given to know those yeah. formulas, those yeah. mysteries. Those. Right. The only way to get it is let it in. Yeah. Amen. Not figure it out. This is what keeps many people stumbling. Because we try to figure it out. Right. How's it going to work? Mm -hmm. Moses, Moses, hey, Lord, there's a water in front of us and soldiers behind us. What you going to do? <laughs> Should we build a bridge? Wait, there's no trees. <laughs> We're in a desert. I mean, there's bushes, but there's no, no real trees. How are we going to make like a log raft and get all these three million plus people across this thing? How are you going to do it? He said, use the little stick in your hand. I think, I think one person understood. Use the one stick in your hand. Y'all looking for a forest to build a boat. God said, take the one piece of wood in your hand and watch what I can do. Does that make understanding? No, it makes faith. Oh, you hear somebody? So it gives understanding to the simple. I said it gives understanding to the simple. To the, to the who? Uh, Y'all catching on now. 
gives understanding to the simple, not the complex. The complex still trying to figure it out. No understanding will come up. Because it gives it. <laughs> oh, I wish I could help somebody. <laughs> it gives understanding to the simple, but when we're complex, it's just it's too complex. Because we have our formula of trying to figure out what God is doing. How does this work out? Mm-mm. It's called trust. It's called faith. It's called letting his word into you. It's called faith comes by hearing. <laughs> and hearing by the <laughs> so that means the more you hear and let it into you, the more faith rises up in you, the more simple you are. <laughs> Understand it just, it just like, I get it. I, I, I get things I never got before. And I, I was like, where did I read it? I don't know where I read it. I just, I don't know if he, I even read it. I just got it. <laughs> are you with me? Why? Because his word produces light. It gives light. It, it produces after it enters. Somebody say after it enters. Not before it enters. Not tell your neighbor. Not before. So did you, did you, you're in now because you entered. So when it enters, it gives light. Not before. This is what we do. This is what we do. We try to figure it out before we let it enter. But it says it, the entrance, which means it's it's. it's So we let it sit at the door, try to figure it out before we let it into our heart. And it never produces anything that way. Oh, God. Are you with me? Somebody say, I'm getting this. So the word itself produces light when you let it into your heart. When you just let it in, tell your neighbor, just let it in. I've learned to let go. Tell your neighbor, just let go. We so uptight, worried about everything. What if he's preaching a bad message and misleading us? We all, we all, y'all, I know. Look at him. <laughs> the church is filled with skeptics <laughs> because we don't believe God. Right. Y'all, let me help you. You can be in an atheist meeting. And get one word from God and light. <laughs> we come to church, we skeptic. And we think we're going to get something. <laughs> you know it's true. Y'all, y'all, people be like, why you got to be so real? Because it's too much fake. <laughs> I mean, we, we never become real because we got too much fake. We, we're never going to see the glory. <laughs> the church, church is filled with skeptical people. Yes. What does he want from me? Oh. Nothing. It's what I want for you. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want nothing from you. It's what I'm trying to get to you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is difference between somebody who was thinking like, I want to be a preacher, and somebody that was just building houses and stuff, but been like, I don't want to do that, God. He said, but I call you. Oh, God. All right, let's go. <laughs> I try to explain the difference between somebody who was just willing to go and didn't want to go. Somebody said, I was just willing. It didn't mean I wanted to. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> Which means I ain't trying to deduce. That's why I'm not trying to gain something on you. I'm trying to get you to gain something in him. Are you with me? So the entrance of your words, uh, his words, God's words, give light. It produces light once it gets inside of you. After it enters. Tell you now, after it enters. Okay, so the process is it's got to get into the soil. <laughs> it's got to get in the soil. Which means it's got to get past the head and get into the heart. Once it gets into the heart, it produces light, which now changes your head. Because without light in your heart, you're not strong enough to change your mind. 
That's why many people struggle, 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 struggle because they try to figure out how to change their mind, how to break bad habits. Get light inside of you. That's why it takes people so long to get out of something. Why? Because they struggle so much. They try to fight their mind and wrestle their mind. Why? Get it in you. Once you get it in you, you can shut everything down. Are you with me? Once you get it in your heart, if nobody else can convince you otherwise, because it's in your heart, truth has entered, light has come, bam. And everybody be like, that ain't right, but light is shining. Every enemy that ever attacks your mind or even old foolish thoughts, that light will shut it off. <laughs> but we've become a people that are we're just trying to change our mind without letting the word enter our heart. Are you with me? Because it's, watch this, check it out. See, one day you can believe one thing in your mind, the next day believe something else. Yeah. It's true. Look, if you can be happy one morning and sad the next morning, where's all that at? Right here. But you can wake up with light one day, like, oh, the joy of the Lord is my strength. And get all the bad phone calls and still smile. Why? Because it ain't in your head. It's in your heart. And then go to sleep, like rest like a baby, wake up, get all the best phone, and you're still the same, happy. Same God. Why? Because it's not in your head. That entrance of his word producing light changes your mind. It's not the word entering your mind that changes it to get into your heart. No, get your mind out of the way. Somebody say, I understand that. So that it gives understanding to the simple, but if you're not simple about it, it doesn't produce any understanding. In other words, God's word has the power in itself to produce what it said. Are you with me? The word itself has the power inside of itself to produce exactly what that is. Do you understand that? Okay, so if you take an apple seed, that Word, apple word seed. Hmm? Are you following or did you get off the bus? Okay, I just make sure you're on the bus. Because I didn't make any bus stops. We driving. So, <laughs> I don't know, driving on the left side or the right, it don't matter, we driving. <laughs> so the, the, the word has the power within itself to produce that that it is. Just like an apple seed has the power in itself to produce exactly what it is. An apple tree. So if you swallow that thing in your soil, guess what's coming? Apple tree. If you're soil and you swallow that. Okay, I'm not saying that if you swallow seed. I know parents, y'all used to tell your children, don't swallow the seed, you're going to grow a watermelon. <laughs> Y'all remember that? I remember too. Don't swallow them watermelon seeds. You're going to grow a watermelon. It look like, never mind. <laughs> Let's go back to. <laughs> Let's get to the word, Lord Jesus. Woo! Glory to God. How did we get there? <laughs> so the word has the power within itself because the word itself is seed. Are you with me? Amen. So a seed sitting on the soil is simply be eaten by the birds. So the longer you reason with what is being preached, the faster it leaves you. Why? Because it's sitting on the surface. Right here. It has not entered. Which is why we come to church and we hear a fancy nice word, you know. And if we start reasoning or just let it sit and we don't let it enter, the devil comes and then it's gone. And you're like, well, I, I don't know. I didn't even understand. And you leave it right there. Oh, no. Instead of swallowing that thing, like I'll never be broken. That should be in your belly. Like I refuse to be sick. That should be in your belly. Why? Because Jesus took it. That should be in your belly. Are you with me? So the entrance of your word, y'all here now. Okay. Oh, can we go forward? I, I want to I go forward. Can I go forward? 
Have we finished this, this segment, eh? Are you here? <laughs> Woo! Eshama, menanamande. So, 1 Samuel 14. Now, first of all, let's go, let's go to Isaiah 60. Isaiah 60. And then we're going to go to 1 Samuel. Isaiah 60. This verse 1, it says, arise, somebody say rise up, shine, for your light has come. Ooh, somebody says that's the word of the Lord. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Okay, so when the light comes, now the glory shows up. Let, let me help somebody. Let me help somebody. Let me help somebody. Help somebody. What does that say? Shine. For, for your light has come. Somebody say, My light has come. Somebody say, My word has come. Or His word, excuse me. His word has come. Amen? Or the word for me has come. The word for me has come. So rise, shine. For your light has come. Or your word has come. It's time for you. Amen? Now watch this. And the what? And the glory of the Lord. See, y'all, y'all, y'all want to be spiritual. And the glory of the Lord has risen upon who? I'm sorry, who? On you. The glory of the Lord has risen upon you. His glory is rising on you. All right, let's take five minutes. Let it, let it just settle into the soil. <laughs> Arise, shine, for your light has come. What is light? The word. The word is light. Amen? Amen. The entrance of his word produces light. So as you're eating the word, light is now being produced. Amen. Uh, and understanding to the simple because you're not trying to figure it out. You're just letting it enter you. Uh, this is why you can go to sleep with the word on. Sometimes it's better if you sleep and let it get in you because you ain't thinking about it. And you ain't trying to kick it out. You just enter. No, because your, your, your conscious mind is like silenced. That ought to help somebody. Because while you're awake, you're like, I don't believe. I don't know. Oh, my God. What did he say? Try to figure, no, just let it get in you. Why are you resting? Uh, I can't sleep with somebody talking to me. That's that. Mm. Mm. Yeah, but you sleep with a TV on. <laughs> Who said that, huh? Right. Can't sleep with somebody. <laughs> you sleep with a TV on. <laughs> Can't hear the word talking to you, but you can sleep with a TV on. <laughs> Fight that thing. My God, it's for your victory, eh? It's for your blessing. It's for your deliverance, eh? How bad do you want it? Arise, shine, for your light has come or your word has come. Eh? The word for you, what you have need of has come. Eh? And the glory, somebody say the glory, the glory. Of, the Lord of the Lord is risen upon you. Wow. The glory of the Lord. Now we think in glory as illumination, right? Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord. I don't have time to get into all this because I have somewhere else I'm going to go. But the glory is the manifestation Amen. of God, not just spiritual, but even natural. Amen. Are you with me? Amen. So if you went into the throne room right now, what would you find? Let's talk about this. Huh? I was high and lifted up in his train filled the temple. And in, in, the, in the temple was the glory of God, was the throne room, was the cherubims. Huh? Uh, hold on. <laughs> was the sapphires? Was the emeralds? Was the jasper? Was the gold? 
The glory is not just the light. It's everything together. I'm going to let you sleep on that one. I'll break it down one day, but I can't do it today. Somebody say, the glory of the Lord. Lord. Risen upon me. That means you should never be broke another day in your life. You should never be broke. Why? Because the entrance of his word produces light. And when your light has come, (laughs) your word, when the word of the Lord that you needed came, it produced light, which produced what you had need of. Are you with me, somebody? In other words, everything you need is in the word, but it's got to get in you. Just because you find it in the word, it must be found in you. Just because you read it in the Bible doesn't mean I can read it inside of you. Uh, Did you catch me? Just because you read it in the Bible and you heard it doesn't mean it got in you. Once it gets in you, it produces light. And when that light comes, now the glory shows up. Now, let me take you somewhere else. Did you catch that? All right, let me finish verse 2, verse 2, verse 2. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and deep darkness the people. But the Lord will arise over you, and his glory will be seen upon you. Okay, hold on. The Gentiles shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. Now stop right there. Let's ask a question. When Solomon was king, what was the queen of Sheba coming to look for? The light or the glory of the kingdom? Because she heard that there was a wise man who was very wealthy. I must go see his glory. And when she showed up, she said, "Uh, only half the story has been told. And she fainted. Why? Because it was the he gave her more than she brought. All right, all right, all right. It's too heavy. It's too heavy. It's too heavy. In other words, when the word of God gets in you, what you're working for. Why you go to work every day to make money, to live, but yet the word gets inside of you, produces light, and now the glory of God. Oh, God. What we sell our soul for, we should sell our life for the word instead. I wish you understood. I wish you understood. I wish you just got it. Why you go to work all the time to make money and yet the word will produce light inside of you? Once it enters, when it enters, you automatically start becoming what you got. (laughs) Okay, all right, all right. Let me me go now. Let me go. I'm I'm a verse, verse Samuel. Let me go. First Samuel, some of y'all still staring at me like, what does he mean? No, just let it get in you. And while you sleep tonight, you're going to be like, ah, I'm not supposed to be sleeping in this little mattress. I'm not supposed to be sleeping on the floor. Mm, I'm not supposed to be sleeping like this, Lord Jesus. For the glory of the Lord has risen upon me. Are you here? 1 Samuel 14. <laughs> are, you re- are you reading with me? You ready? Is your heart open? Amen. I'm going to show you something. And then you're going to be shocked. You'll be like, oh, my. And then you're going to wake up and go, oh, yes. And the men of Israel, verse 24, and the men of Israel were distressed. Somebody say distressed that day. They were distressed. For Saul had placed the people under an oath, saying, Cursed is the man who eats any food until evening, before I have taken vengeance on my enemies. Saul placed these people under an oath, 
until he got his own vengeance on his enemies. Had nothing to do with the people. I tell you, never had nothing to do with the people. They were just under his authority. Are you with me? Amen. They were under his authority. He was the king. They were the soldiers. Nobody eats until I win this battle because of vengeance. I tell you, never say because of vengeance. Because Saul wanted vengeance on his enemy. Are you with me? So he said, nobody's going to eat anything until we... Well, now, my question is, how many soldiers do you want starving? <laughs> how many soldiers do you want starving that are fighting for you? But vengeance will cause you to do things. Or offense or anger or foolishness will cause you to do things. Make no sense. So none of the people tasted food. Tell your neighbor, nobody ate. Nobody ate. Verse 25. Now all the people of the land came to a forest. Somebody say a forest. A forest. And there was what? <laughs> Where was the honey? On the, On the ground. Now you starving. But you under an oath that you can't touch it. But yet you starving. And you come to a forest, and it's all on the ground, honey on the ground. Honey, instant, instant adrenaline, like, whoa, let's go. But you can't touch it because somebody told you. Twenty-six. And when the people had come into the woods, oh, they get to the forest, there's honey on the ground. Now they come into the woods. The honey's dripping. <laughs> dripping on them and they can't eat it. Stepping in it and they can't touch it. For the... <laughs> you walking in honey, you starving. Hold on. You are hungry, and every corner has a restaurant you can't eat. Wow. That sucks. I've been there, man. That sucks. Not a good feeling. Go down this road, there's every restaurant you want, but you can't eat. Oh. You're starving, and you can't eat. Why? Because somebody told you you can't. But no one put his hand to his mouth. Man, they got it on their fingers just by walking, oh. dripping. Like, oh, yeah. what, what just hit me? Ooh. Oh, I can't, oh, no, 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 that cost me too much money. No. Oh. No, that's too expensive. No, I, I, that's no way. There's no way I can't do it. But no one put his hand to his mouth for the people feared. The oath. Verse 27. But somebody say, but Jonathan. Watch this. But Jonathan had not heard. Somebody say he didn't hear. He didn't hear it. He didn't hear. Tell your neighbor, he didn't hear it. See, faith come by hearing. And so does doubt. Unbelief comes by hearing. Faith comes by hearing. Unbelieving comes by hearing. Offense comes by hearing. Oh, man. <laughs> but Jonathan had not heard, thank you, Dan, his father's charge. Uh, so check it out. I, I, I found this thing of honey. Okay. So now, look. Oh my so now you can't eat it, right? <laughs> but it's all over you. But you can't eat it. And you're hungry. Why? Because of fear. Because of fear. Do you know what the opposite of faith is? Fear. 
Plain and simple. Fear. The opposite of you moving in faith is you're moving in fear. But Jonathan had not heard unbelief, had not heard doubt, had not heard he couldn't. He hadn't heard his father charge the people with an oath. Are you with me? Therefore, look, the man just walked up, stretched his rod. Well, hold on, hold on. He stretched out the end of his rod that was in his hand, dipped it. And just started eating the honey. Everybody else starving. And he started eating the honey. Go ahead. You, you can take you can take did you taste it? It's good honey. I, I, I licked that, don't give it to nobody. That, that's going, man, that's going a long way. So. Why couldn't they get to it? Why couldn't they get to it? Jonathan's like, that's good stuff. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? Why can't you live that good life? Why can't you live above where you're living right now? Why can't you have peace? Why can't you have joy? Why can't you have a good marriage? Why can't you have fun in your life? What's wrong with you? What's stopping you when the honey's dripping? When it's on your... What's, what's thwarting you? What's stopping you? I need, I need that. Where's that hot tea, man? I need that hot tea to chase this honey down, you know? <laughs> I'm going to give me some hot tea to chase this honey down because it's thick. That honey thick, you know. That's some hot tea right there. It goes good with that honey, man. So, 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 why was he so arrogant? Why was he arrogant to poke his rod into the and eat it while nobody else could. Uh, was it arrogance? Or was it just boldness? Why was he bold? Because he didn't hear what they heard. Wasn't it arrogance? Boldness. He's like, I'm, I'm hungry, I see it. I'm going to eat it, it's mine. Well, you know why you don't eat? You, you know why we don't break out? Because somebody told you you can't. Somebody drilled it in you. This is as far as you're ever going to go. Somebody told you all the time you worthless. You ain't going to work out. You, you sorry. Your life will never be. This is as good as you're ever going to be. Uh, people tell you all the time. You, got, you went to go get hired. They say, we, we can't hire you. You, you, you. you don't qualify. And now you got disqualified in your heart. Because somebody told you you don't qualify. You, got, you, you, didn't even, you didn't even get the second interview. They say you don't qualify. And now you got that word stuck in your heart. You don't qualify. So you go, you go looking for another job. You don't qualify. And people eating your honey. Huh? They say you don't qualify. You, you ain't good enough. You don't. And, and so what? all oh, your whole life is based on what's been told you. What you believe. And yet the word of God is there for us to break that. Are you here? 
What you value, though? What you value? You value people's opinions. You value people's opinions more than you value what the word says. That's why you struggle. You value what other people say instead of what does God say? What does that word say? Uh, you go and talk to people about all kind of stuff, but you don't ever talk to God about it. Wow. Are you with me? Somebody say, oh, yeah, 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 oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. But Jonathan had not heard. Somebody say he didn't hear it. That's why he was bold. Listen, I, I, I met men, I met, y'all met that one brother, what was his name, Dion Hockey, oh, yeah. when he came? Yes, what did he say? Ain't nobody told me I couldn't. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he said, ain't nobody told me I couldn't. Yeah. Yeah. He just got up there and preached and called the witch and everybody else and yeah. Yeah. <laughs> deliverance and all kind of crazy stuff on this, just after being saved. Because yeah. nobody told him he couldn't do it. Because everybody tell you you can't. You can't walk spiritual with God because why? You can't live in freedom because why? Because you got a record. Because you, you still got stuff on your record because you never had a good job because you never had a good education. Who told you? Yeah. Let me, let, me, let me talk to you like God talked to Eve. Who told you? Who told you you were naked? Who told you you couldn't go in there? Who to, the only thing God said, don't eat that tree right there. They ate it, now you Who told you you were naked? Who told you you couldn't be a millionaire? Who told you you couldn't live in peace? Who told you you can't own five businesses? told you you cannot have freedom on another level who told you when the bible says i already paid for it somebody had to tell you <laughs> you going to eat some honey man somebody said i'm eating honey now watch this look what happened look what i tell you never look what happened you know the first check you get that you ain't never got before and it's like 10 grand you're like Whoo, guess what? You, you, you start smiling. I know. When the first check came in, 10 grand, I was like, glory to God. The word works, man. And then people try to tell me, it don't work. I say, you a liar. You ain't working it. I'm talking about, I'm talking about no, no, no church folk, no, no ministry. No, I'm talking about seed sown out there. And money come. Amen. I'm not talking about right here, right now. Yeah, I'm talking about when there was nobody. Yeah. Hey, y'all didn't hear what I said. Because some people think we need a lot of people. You know, you, you just need you need God and obedience. You need God and obedience. <laughs> Don't hang your hat on nobody's. But hear what I just said. Careful now. <laughs> Don't hang your hat on nobody. Don't hang your hat on your, your career, your this, your that, because it could be <laughs> gone like that tomorrow. You better hang your hat on God and his word. Amen. Are you with me? Amen. Are you hearing somebody? So he had not heard his father's charge. His father charged the people with the oath. Therefore, he stretched out the end of the rod that was in his hand, dipped it in. Somebody said, dip it in. Dip it in. Man, he just put that rod in that honeycomb and said, I don't know what's wrong with y'all. I'm starving. The food is dripping, and y'all can't even touch it. And it is all around you. Okay. Y'all going to get mad at me now. But that's all right. You're going you're gonna to get a revelation. He stretched out the end of the rod that was in his hand and dipped it in a honeycomb, yeah. put his hand to his mouth, and his countenance. The Bible says his eyes opened. That means everybody else was walking around blind. The King James said his eyes opened. 
His countenance brightened. His eyes open. Somebody say his eyes open. His eyes open. I'll tell you, neighbor, my eyes are open now. My eyes, my eyes are open now. I let too many people hold me back. Hmm? Too many people's words hold me back. Huh? Too many people's oaths hold me back. Hmm? Mm. Mm. 28. Somebody say his eyes open. Then one of the people said, <laughs> hold on, hold on. This is what they do. It don't work. This is what they do. God don't heal no more. Holy Ghost was for yesterday. I mean, you know, 2,000 years ago. You know, that finances in God, that's not, you know, that ain't, that ain't, you got to work hard. God don't, mm -mm. go read your Bible again. They came out of Egypt with what? I'm, I'm sorry, they came out of Egypt with what? A little bit. They broke Egypt. Somebody say, we're going to break Egypt. <laughs> Then one of the people said, your father strictly charged the people with an oath, saying, cursed is the man who eats food this day. Oh, you see? Fear. Fear. What keeps people broke? Fear. What pe people sick? Fear. Bad relationships? Fear. Hmm? Everything? Fear. Fear, fear, fear. I'm afraid. I'm afraid of this. I'm afraid of that. I'm afraid. I'm afraid I'm going to lose out. Guess what? You will. You will. As soon as you, as soon as you live in fear, you will. Tell your neighbor, I choose faith. Tell your neighbor, I choose faith. Now, hold on. Cursed is the man who eats food this day. And the people were faint, weak, struggling, and food all around them, but still broke. Trillion dollar economy. Making no money. I'm talking about USA. Yay. People leaving other countries to come here making money and American folk, Christian folk, church folk. Why? Cursed is the man who eats food this day. Because we live under the curse of what somebody else said to us. He said, I'm a Christian now. You still live under that curse. That you can't make it. You can't have it. It ain't gonna work for you. You've done too much wrong. This is all, all this. All, you ain't educated enough in this society. And then you ask some of the billionaires, I, I, what, uh, they barely made it through 12th grade. Wow. I'm, I'm in good company. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> Watch me now. Glory to God. Huh? Are, you, are you listening? This is saying that food was all around them, that they couldn't eat it. That means when you were born again, you were born into the kingdom of God, and everything's all around you, but you have been told this is as far as you can go. The day you unhear that is the day you go after it. <laughs> you, know, you know why some church folk are so scared? to be very wealthy and really go after the things of God and money, finances for the kingdom. You know why? You're afraid? Because you're afraid. Because somebody tell you you're going to be prideful. Somebody say, well, that's just too, too extreme for a Christian. But it's not extreme for a worldly man. Too extreme for a Christian to be, you know, rolling in a double R. Double R. Man, I changed my picture. You see me? <laughs> Just because I could. I did. I changed my picture. I was leaning on the RR. Y'all saw that? What's up? I was leaning on the RR in the parking lot, church parking lot. I said, hey, I ain't scared. Why? Because the worldly church folk going to be like, that's just too much. Why he do that? See, because religion will tell you it's too much. So the question, you got it, you got it, she got it right there. That's a cool pic right there. 
Okay, we're going we're, we're gonna, to, we're manifesting it though. It's coming to light. And people get nervous. Why? Because of fear. Somebody told you something and it's still there. Like, why can't you be the next Bill Gates? Why? He got there without God. Why can't you get there with? Because too many folk had told you. I wish I helped somebody this Wednesday night. It's all around them. Your peace all around you. Why can't you take it? Joy all around you. Why can't you have it? Because somebody told you you got to be sad once in a while. You got to be sick once in a while. Or you ain't human. I don't want to be human. I want to be a new creature. In a human body. Why can't I be a new creature in a shell? You got to mess up once in a while. Why? Jesus did it. And if he's the image and we're being turned into him, why do I got to mess up? What you been told? Uh, I think five I think five people getting it. I think five people catching it. Huh? All around them. Simply because they were told they couldn't do it. What have you been told you couldn't do? And you don't do it because you've been told you can't do it. Hmm? I remember when we got bikes, people were like, I can't believe you got bikes. I mean, not bikes. <laughs> the bikes, you know. Yeah. When you go like that, they go, Woof. <laughs> They were like, y'all bastards, man, and she got a, a sports bike. That's kind of it's kind of crazy to have, a, you know, a 600 RR racing bike as a bastard. I said, it's not mine, it's hers. <laughs> Ah! This is too far out. Is it? How far is too far? What mountain is too high? Are you here, somebody? What mountain is too high? You can't get up there. Let Jesus say, speak to that thing. Tell it to be removed. He said, bring it down to your level. Huh. So you get up there. Bring it down to your level so you get it up there. Just bring it down so you can get up there. <laughs> oh, you hear somebody? So don't live a Christian life when everything's all around you, but you can't touch it because somebody told you not to. I'm talking about health. I'm talking about healing. I'm talking about good life. I'm talking about money. I'm talking about being blessed. I'm talking about the glory of God rising upon you. Hmm? God's way, not the world's way. God's way. Tell your neighbor God's way. I want it God's way. And I'm going to get it God's way. Not the world's way. Amen? <laughs> oh, my. Revelation 10, 8, 9. You know what it says? It says the book. Hmm. Revelation 12, 8, 9. It says the book is sweet like honey. The word is sweet like honey. So when you start eating the honey of the word, it starts opening your eyes to what you can accomplish, to what you can do, to what, how you can live. Uh, what's, what's right by God? What is right by God? What's good for you? How is it good for you to live by God? What is God's standards for your life? Hmm? Struggle? No. Huh? Arguing all the time? Relationship? Bad situation? No. That's not God's standards. Peace is God's standards. Joy is God's standards. Huh? Financially, 
well off is God's standard. Are you with me? How are you going to get there? That's the question. I'm finished right now. How are you going to get there? Huh? With what you've heard? With what everybody else has told you? How are you going to get there? How are you going to get to that place where God says, this is my plan, my will for you? How are you going to get there? It's only one way. Eat the word. Amen. Eat that word. Amen. Uh, get out of opinions. Get out of fancy messages. Get away from fancy messages. Huh? Are you hear what I said? Get away from fancy messages. You hear me? Get the word in you. Eat the word. Hmm? <laughs> As I was with Moses, so shall I be with you. Uh, that's what he said to Joshua. And then he said, Joshua, don't let the word depart from your eyes. Keep it in the very forefront. Hmm? Be bold. Be courageous. Be strong. How can you be bold? How can you be courageous? How can you be strong without eating the honey? Wow. Come on. The reason we are not strong, the reason we're not bold about specific things is because we have not eaten the honey. As soon as you eat the word and it illuminates you is when you become bold. When you become strong and you don't let circumstances push you around. You don't let people talk you out of what belongs to you. Come on. Man, I, got, I don't know who you are, but I see a businessman over you. I don't know who this man right behind you, right here, third row. There's, I look over your head and I see businessman. I don't know if anybody's ever told you or you don't do it right now, but there is businessman all over you. Hmm. Hmm. I just see somebody typing, 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 typing on a computer, on a computer, huh? What is this? What is this? I just see somebody typing on a computer. What, why do I see somebody, when I look at you, somebody typing on a computer? I just see somebody typing on a computer, typing, typing, typing on a computer, huh? But I see a business, I see business, business, and I just see somebody typing on a computer. I don't know. What is this? You know what this is? Business, okay? I don't know what this is, but I see somebody typing, huh? Rebo shaka. Menamasa. Rekish. Rosco, Randa Bashikata. I just see a computer. Uh, what do you call that? The typing. What do you call that? The keyboard. Hey, keyboard. I see a keyboard. I see a keyboard going. Roshka Balabista, Mananamasa. You're a businessman, huh? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Huh? You're a businessman, huh? What do I see a computer? I see typing, typing, typing. What, what, what kind of business not, do you do? I'm not sure why, but I mean. Huh? If you see it, I don't know. No, nah, because I saw a word. I saw business right over your head. No, I, yeah, I, I own a business. You own a business, yes, but sir. then I just see somebody typing on a computer. Okay. Hmm. Ha <laughs> Baraba. He owns a daycare. You own a daycare. Wow. Amen. But I just see somebody typing on the computer. Why? Ah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I just see somebody sitting down, typing, 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 typing. I see the computer screen. I see, I see like search, like search, like search, like searching, like searching. Randa Like searching, like searching. Huh? I just see it. I look at him and I see business and then I see somebody typing on the computer and I see the word search, 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 search. They're like searching, like searching. Just lift your hands and worship the Lord. Huh? Mm, no more limits for you, huh? Stop listening to what people told you. And listen to what God is saying to you now. Mm. Listen to what God is saying to you now. Uproot everything that you've been told about yourself. Mm? Everything you've been told about yourself. You hear me? Pull it out. Don't listen to it. I'm going to pray for you today. Okay? I'm going to pray for you today. Right? But I just see, I see the word search. You know, like um, when I look at this computer, I see the word searching and I see dot, dot, dot. And it's like searching, searching. So I see somebody typing the computer. When I look at the computer screen, I see the word searching. And I'm looking at that going, what do you mean searching? Like, are you searching for for like the next phase or the, or the next season, like I'm searching for the next, like what's next after this? Like I did this, but I'm searching for the next. I, I don't know if that fits you or not, but 
this is what I see. I see somebody typing on the computer. I see the screen. I see, see searching. And it's like I'm searching for the next, next, what's next, what's going on. What am I supposed to do now? There's more. There's more. I'm searching, huh? Come on, just lift your hands and worship the Lord. Hmm? So, so you, are, you, are you planning another business? My wife is, but I'm not sure what it is. Okay, because see, <laughs> this is what I see. I saw a woman at the computer searching. She always at the computer searching. <laughs> Okay, maybe I should have went. A, maybe I should have. Maybe I should have went a little further and yeah. say I see a woman searching. Yeah. You know, because this is what I saw. I saw like like a lady. I saw her fingers, and I yeah. saw her searching, searching the computer, searching, and I saw the word searching, and I saw dot dot dot. Like the computer is searching. There's like a lot of searching going on. Hmm? Yeah. So this is your always, wife, huh? Yes. Always searching for the next. Yes. Okay. So then I'm talking to you. I want to make sure yes, that I'm sir. talking yeah. to you, okay? You're because in the right place. because <laughs> what I saw then after the word searching, searching, and I saw this computer screen, and I saw the word searching, I saw an angel come, and and I look at the angel. I'm like, what is this angel coming for? Ooh. Yeah, because then I see the angel Lord come. And I see the angel Lord standing at, at the computer, you know? And it's like the angel Lord is carrying the next, but she's searching. Now hear me very clearly. Because when I saw the hands, <laughs> and I saw the word searching, 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 and I saw the computer screen, and it was like this person was just typing a lot, just typing a lot. But it was only the word searching that I saw. So it didn't make sense to me that I see somebody typing so much, but only the word searching. But as I saw that word searching, then I saw the angel Lord come. And it's interesting because the angel Lord is always the one that brings the assignment. So the searching is searching the system, but the angel Lord is already waiting and holding it. So what I want to give you wisdom on is the Bible says, seek first the kingdom, okay? So I want you to pray and shift her into a, a time of waiting because I'm looking at the angel and I see him carrying already the next, but he's, he's, he, he cannot give you the next, okay, until there's a shift. So there has to be a shift, and I see the angel, Lord, waiting for a shift. So I would encourage you both to, to just seek the Lord and wait and stop searching, huh? Tell her, stop searching. Because like Daniel, the angel of the Lord had already came when the prayer went, but it was being held up, you remember? And so when the angel of the Lord came, he said, I have come for your words. And when you first prayed, God already answered. There was just time in which the enemy was, was holding back. So when I look at this and I see this, I see the Lord saying there is, there is something that needs to shift one, okay? when that shift takes place the angel now will release the next so there's something that needs to take place and I'm, I'm just gonna wait on that for a minute okay there's something that needs to take place but there needs to be a time of meditating and waiting on the Lord because the next is already standing there um, I see him standing there oh God so, uh, Jesus. Uh, can I pray for this young lady back here, please? Can I pray for you? Please? I have to pray for you. I, I'm, I'm not finished yet. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm waiting on some things. Just come, let me pray for you. Pray for you because the Lord is really ministering to you, okay? Uh, I don't, just don't faith me. Don't worry about them. Don't worry about them. Okay? Y'all just lift your hands and worship the Lord. Eh? You know, God brought you here today. Yeah? God brought you. I know somebody brought you, but it was actually the Lord brought you. You hear me? Because the Lord wants to heal your heart. You understand? And you have to allow God to heal. It's time to move forward. Eh? 
Yeah, you're, like, you're like several months behind schedule, right? You're like several months behind schedule. And God's like, it's time to just heal, let go, and it's time to proceed forward. Huh? Because if you stay here too long, you, you'll never get out. You understand? If you stay in this situation where your heart is, you'll never get out. Am I talking to you? That's the Lord, huh? So just ask the Lord. Say, Lord. <laughs> so, Lord, I just give you my heart, first of all. I give you my heart. I let go. I trust. I forgive. And I surrender. I surrender. You got it? So the Lord is getting ready to give you a new heart, huh? Will you take a new heart? Will you protect that heart? You look at me, you're going to protect that heart. You're going to fill that heart with the word of God. You're going to read your Bible? It's a new day. Right? Oh, I am your house. So, so there's some things that need to be um, like Moses buried the Egyptian. There's some things that need to be buried, but they need to be buried so deep they don't come back out. Because when this this angel releases this new business, it cannot bring competition between the two. Because God wants to bring so much, so much wealth. Okay. God is not afraid of wealth. He wants to bring wealth, but there is something about competition because I look at competition, some kind of competing. There cannot be any competition. It has to be single-minded, focused on the kingdom of God. What God is doing in your life and her life is simply for the kingdom of God. There cannot be, there cannot be, uh, and I'm very careful with this, the com com competing, okay? But something has to be buried. Hmm? You hear? You ready? Fifteen. What is this? How, how old are you right now? Twenty-three. But I see you like fourteen and fifteen. Hmm? I see you right now, like fourteen, fifteen years old. It's like fifteen. You remember that? Hmm? You remember where you were? Where you were when you were fifteen? Because I see you even stuck at that date. I see you stuck when you were fifteen years old. Yeah. Yeah. You see, Kronda, Beshiketele, Manda. It's God. It's not me. God. God showing me you're fifteen and you're stuck right there. Huh? And then these things that just took place actually are because of 15. Uh, Everybody just stand up, please. <laughs> come, come on, let's just, just intercede God. for her. Come on, just yeah. worship mm -hmm. the Lord. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Come on, just so raise your hands. Because mm -hmm. that, now this, and it's going to be a recurring a cycle. This is why I'm saying it has to break now. Because this thing is over. Huh? Like, I'm, we're killing it now, right? This is, the, this is the Egyptian we are burying in the ground. He'll never come up again, huh? Oh, I just want to help somebody. Man of God, can I pray for you too? Just, if you don't mind, can I pray for you too? Because I want to get to the bottom of this. Oh, oh. Man, just come. Just, just lift your hands, worship the Lord, amen? This is, this is the kingdom business. Just right there. That's good, that's good. Oh, Tell your neighbor, it's kingdom business. Listen, if you're dealing with something and you want to get rid of it, why don't you come up here? Get on that side over there. If you're dealing with something, you want to get rid of it, come up on the other side. Oh, Brother Sharon, lift your hand over there. Like I am your house oh, I am your house
Come on, lift your hands and pray. Lord, Come on, we're going to deal, right deal with things right now. We're going to deal with things right now. Come on, we're going to break things open right now. Listen. Listen. There's things. Listen, there are things. When Moses killed that Egyptian, the one mistake he made was he didn't bury it deep enough. Huh? You, you better hear what I just said. The one mistake Moses made was that he did not bury that Egyptian deep enough. And the wind uncovered him. Huh? There are things that need to be buried so deep they can never be found again. Huh? Are you here? Are you with me? Come on, let's just worship the Lord just, just real quick, just for the second time. I am your house. I am your house.
just just start with what you have, right? Start with what you got, right? God uses what you got. God uses what you got. God uses what you got. Take that up. God uses what you got. Hey, you got to start selling bicycles to start selling cars. Start selling bicycles to start selling motorcycles to start selling cars. I don't care. Just start somewhere, somehow, something God uses. Okay? Amen. So I don't know. Ask your wife, what is this deal with cars? Because I'm trying to get away from it, but ask your wife, what does this thing have to do with cars, 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 cars? Ask her because maybe that's a key to help. God uses terminology, you know. Bury some things, huh? So deep, just let them, let them, let them, let them run out. Okay, what do, where are we at here? Cars. You, well, you need your, you, you're trying to move into your next. Okay, to move into your next, you gotta let go of yesterday, right? So everything that was yesterday and everything that people told you about yesterday, you gotta let go, and you gotta stop listening to people who are still talking about you yesterday, right? Yeah, and whatever animosity that's gotta go too, huh? Any animosity gotta go in your life. You cannot you cannot be in animosity and flow like a river, huh? My God, am I helping somebody here? Somebody say I'm moving to my next, huh? You're moving to the next, huh? That means you're gonna eat the world. You gotta eat that word. Just take it. Look at me. Look at me. Shata rota be shaka. Bring it to me. Nengranda. Nengrasu. Nenanamande. You gotta know where your next is at, huh? And you gotta stay focused on your next, huh? You understand? Shupandusha. Look at me. Just let it go, man. this Sunday and it is very very important for me to say it again you're always buying and selling whether you know it or not you're buying an idea and selling an old one so if you're not selling out of what you were and buying into who you are there's no transactions being made there's always a buying and a selling that means that look look Look, he, he, he bought your sin, you got to sell it. He bought your sin. When he went to the cross, he bought it. He paid for it. Didn't he pay for it? If it's paid for, who bought it? Jesus bought it. That means you need to sell it. That means you need to give it up to him. Are you with me, somebody? So you're always buying and selling. Mm, come buy bread without money. Buying. You're selling hunger. And buying food. Are you with me? I wish somebody understood. Come on, man. I'm, I'm trying to get you to another level. You, know, you catch it, huh? That means you got to sell out of stuff that ain't helping you. And buy the things that are. Amen. That means there's a price to be paid. Somebody say, I'll pay the price to come to that new place. No matter the cost, huh? No matter the cost. Whatever it costs you, it's worth it, eh? Uh, when you buy into the things that God has for you, it's worth it, huh? It's worth it, huh? It's worth it. I'm saying to you, it's worth it. Huh? It's worth it. I own my own shell and never burn out. So that's what I want you to do. Yeah, yeah. What I want you to do, just sell out on some, sell some stuff right now. Just sell some stuff to the Lord right now. Come on, sell it to him. Now, listen, listen to me. Hold on. Listen, yeah, just say right there, but hold on. Listen to me. Sell him. Because he's buying it from you. If he bought your sin, then he wants to buy your other stuff. But you got to sell it to him. And when you sell it to him, there's a transaction that's made, huh? You understand what I'm saying? Some of you like, what does he mean? <laughs> I'm saying, sell it to him. Because whatever you sell, you don't own no more. And whatever you buy, now you own. If you don't take ownership of it, you never have it. It's always fleeing you. Huh? So sell him the thing that is bothering you the most. Sell it to him. 
give it up to him. Say, here, I sell this to you and I buy my peace from you. Transaction, that's what it is. Uh, without money, it's all by faith. I sell you my sorrow and I buy your joy. Glory hey. to God. Hey, 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 hey. Oh, ha, ha, ha. I sell you my pain and I take your healing, huh? I sell you my troubles and I buy your glory. Hey, Globrata. I, I sell it. Hey, I sell it to you, Lord, so I don't own it no more. Huh? I sell it to you so I don't own it no more. And then I, I, I buy in return that that you're selling to me. It don't sound like a fair trade because it's not supposed to. It's God. You gotta make the transaction. No man, no man can make it for you. No, I can't make it for you. I, I can only, I can only broker the deal. I'm gonna broker the deal for you. Is that all right? I'm bringing God to broker a deal between you and Him. Make the deal right now. Make the deal right now. Make the deal. Make the deal. Make it. Make it. Take it. God, God, make the deal.
lift your hands and bless them. Not just your birthday, eh? 
there is, there is something very remarkable that God is getting ready to release. Uh, <laughs> all, all I can tell you is that the level of your understanding is going to take you through layers of what has kept you down. It's like you're going to wake up and what you have been receiving shall become like, ah, I got it. I don't know how, I don't know how, I, I, so much. I, <laughs> it's what I said, right? <laughs> like all of a sudden, bam, and things shall become so different simply because you understand. <laughs> and there will be people around your life that are going to be like, ah, I don't even know you. Like, I don't even understand you no more. You used to be like this, but now it's like overnight. You're no longer like that. <laughs> it's like, it's like, I don't know how to explain it. Other, It's like everything becomes new. It's like you move into a new place. You like live in a whole new place. And people are like, I don't even know where you live no more. <laughs> it's like, they go to your old address and it's like vacant. It's like empty. It's like, it's like, it's like empty. And it's like, wait a minute. I thought these people, you know, lived here, but they don't live here no more. And they can't find you because you no longer live. Wow. You can't be found. The reason you can't be found is because you've been hidden. getting ready to do something, huh? Let me pray for you, son. You've been through a season of, of, of wrestling, huh? But I want to tell you, your faith, huh? Your faith, your faith shall not fail you. Don't lay off faith. Don't lay off faith because your faith will not fail. Your faith will not fail. together for Jesus. Father, we thank you tonight for your word. Thank you for your word. Thank you <laughs> that we can have the honey. Lord Jesus, that we don't have to just walk around everything and see everything there but can't touch it, Lord, because of fear that people put in our lives. Foolishness. Father, we thank you that you gave us the kingdom and everything that is in the kingdom belongs to us too. Amen. And we take it in Jesus name and we shall not be ashamed for what you have given us is in the kingdom and if you put it in the kingdom for us to have we shall not be ashamed to have it because we can have our God and the kingdom in Jesus name thank you Lord for your goodness to us today thank you for healing us thank you for delivering us thank you for setting us free in the name of Jesus Christ somebody shout amen, amen. somebody shout I'm free I'm, free. I'm staying free I'm, I'm going to live free I'm going to walk in freedom I'm going to talk in freedom. I'm going to shout in freedom. I'm going to dance in freedom. Because it's mine. Amen. We love you. We bless you. We'll see you Saturday night.